Every year on March 15th, China's central media CCTV presents a gala against fraud. It exposes counterfeit and shoddy products and claims to safeguard consumers' rights and interests. It started in 1991. In 1992, relevant government agencies got involved. Since then, what was originally a popular TV show has been turned into a government campaign. After 33 years, this show has left its audience with mixed feelings. On the one hand, what was aired in 2024 still stunned the audience. On the other hand, Chinese people who are already familiar with all sorts of inside stories of counterfeiting in different industries have started to speculate about the intention behind this program launched by the top-level media of the party. Let's take a look at what stunned the audience at the 2024 gala. We've selected a few items that have been highly discussed on China's social media. There have been fires in many places in China recently. Here's an industrial trading company in Zhejiang province that caught on fire on March 16, 2024, destroying several factory buildings. Here is a fire at an auto parts warehouse in Guangzhou. This fire broke out in a dormitory of a technical college in Jiangsu province. The most shocking was the forest fire in Sichuan province on March 16, 2024. The smoke covered the sky and the fire was less than 20 kilometers from the town. What do these fires have to do with the party's top media event? Well, the gala revealed the fraudulent fire prevention and extinguishing equipment that people used during the fires. Here, one manufacturer used ordinary window glass as fireproof glass. According to China's fire codes, buildings with a height of more than 54 meters must use fire-resistant windows with a fire-resistant integrity of not less than one hour for the external windows of each apartment. If the fire-resistant glass installed is not qualified, the consequences will be unimaginable in the event of a fire in a high-rise building. Reporters from the gala visited a specialized manufacturer of fire-resistant glass in Tianjin. The reporter didn't see the glass sprayed with fire-resistant liquid and drying processes in the production line. A worker under repeated questioning by the reporter said that fire-resistant glass on the production line was just ordinary tempered glass without any fireproof treatment. The gala exposed that fireproof glass production enterprises in many parts of China were committing the same practice. Some of the staff members even claimed they could offer customers the corresponding qualified inspection reports. The staff said, My inspection report says fire-resistant for one and a half hours, but in fact, my glass can only be fire-resistant for half an hour. According to the staff of the National Fire Inspection Center, a sample of fire-resistant glass produced by a fraudulent manufacturer was deformed and cracked in less than four minutes at high temperatures. In addition to bogus fire-resistant glass are bogus fire extinguishers. According to the tips provided by the informants, in early January 2024, the Gala reporter came to the well-known hardware and electromechanical market in central China. This is where many fire extinguishers are distributed wholesale. According to the National Standard for Fire Extinguishers, the main component of the dry powder used in fire extinguishers is ammonium dihydrogen phosphate ADP, accounting for 75% of the content. Some stores sell substandard fire extinguishers with the content of ADP reduced from 75% to 50% or even to 20%. It's a case where one can't say the worst for sure because there is always something worse. When the undercover reporter asked about substandard fire extinguishers, that is, those that can't extinguish a fire, and why they sell them, the retail staff said, with a smirk to the camera, bosses have to make money. The reporter was also told, if you buy the ones that cost 30 yuan, or about $4 a bottle, you can be assured that they won't extinguish the fire. The more you use it, the bigger the fire gets. This year's gala against fraud also targeted a popular food, pork with preserved vegetables. It's a dish with the most popularity among pre-made dishes right now in China. Take a look at these pre-made dishes listed online. 
It has already sold a lot, and it looks great. The gala exposed the fact that several pre-made food factories deliberately chose pork collar meat to substitute pork belly meat traditionally used in the dish so as to cut down food costs and labor costs. What is pork collar meat? It is the neck of a pig, the location where there is a collection of lymph nodes, thyroid glands, and other various toxic organs. According to Chinese law, slaughtered pigs must be groomed first. Depending on how the lymph nodes are diseased, the adrenal glands, the thyroid gland, and so on must be removed before selling on the market. Several factories that specialize in prepackaged food have, without exception, used pork collar meat that hasn't been treated properly. Why? While the wholesale price of pork belly that's traditionally used for the dish is around 12 yuan per caddy, the wholesale price of pork collar meat that doesn't get properly treated is only around 3 yuan per caddy one-fourth of the price of the original ingredient. The reporter visited several local frozen food markets and many merchants disclosed that it has been an open secret for a long time to use poorly processed inferior pork collar meat as a substitute for the popular pre-made dish. In the course of the investigation, those in charge of making such dishes said that with the continued hot sales of pre-made dishes, their business has become popular. Both production and sales have been busy all year round. In the program, the undercover reporter asked an industry insider if consuming thyroid will do harm to the human body. The person replied, I don't eat it. Let's take a look at another ridiculously expensive liquor, Tinghua Jiu liquor. Since 2020, Tinghua Jiu, a so-called high-end business liquor, has appeared on the consumer market. In just three years, this liquor is seen everywhere in China. The standard package sells for 5,860 yuan, or 815 a bottle. The boutique package sells for 58,600 yuan, or $8,150 a bottle. Why is it so expensive? The advertisement indicates that this liquor has the effects of boosting immunity, improving sleep, safeguarding certain male functions, regulating physiological disorders, and anti-aging. The manufacturer also claims that some of the benefits offered by this liquor are internationally patented. In its marketing and publicity campaign, the company even invited two Nobel Prize winners, one of them being the father of Viagra, to work with Zhang Shui Feng as co-chief scientist. Zhang Shui Feng is the mastermind behind this high-end liquor. In fact, CCTV's reporter checked on the official website, the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. The patent file submitted by this liquor showed a blank in the column of national processing status. The patent agent responsible for this file explained that anyone can apply for a patent, but whether it can be recognized and approved is another story. Moreover, this patent agent told the reporter the cool flavor agent mentioned in the patent of this liquor is nothing high-tech but common mint extracts. After this program aired, the Chinese media continued to dig for information. They found that the designer of this liquor, the chairman of this company, used the same scheme before to cheat consumers. The first breakthrough product created by this chairman was called Verigrass 5X Series. This product was said to be based on systematic research on Ophiocordyceps sinensis and combined with modern medicines, pharmaceutical processes, and technology in 2009. After spending over half a month in the lab, he claimed to have invented a special technology to allow the business to produce pure powdered tablets after investing over 20 million yuan. The Verigrass 5X series is targeted to those who are frail, old, and in declining physical condition, as well as those who are suffering from physical and energy overdraft due to heavy workload, lack of sleep, and excessive socializing. A box of the product with a total net content of about 28.35 grams is priced at a whopping 29,888 yuan, or over US $140 per gram. He spent a lot of money on advertising, and the product created a miracle of sales at the time. But soon after, this product was exposed by a few media outlets and ordered by the Food and Drug Administration to stop production because it had violated the regulations on the sale of health food products. The product involves various problems such as illegal sales and false advertising. The official WeChat public account of Tinghua Zhou Liquor was suspended after the gala, and several e-commerce platforms, including Jingdong, removed this liquor from their shelves. 
Then, its parent company, Qinghai Spring, also received an inquiry letter from the SSE, the Shanghai Stock Exchange. The next day, the China Securities Regulatory Commission decided to conduct an inspection of the company. The inspection team is now on the premises to carry out its work. However, the audience isn't impressed with the handling of the case. Why? We'll get to that in a little bit. In recent years, dating platforms have gained the attention of many busy Chinese, and these platforms are full of enticing slogans, such as high quality supply of the opposite sex, zero threshold, and multiple success stories. The March 15th Gala reporter has been through several well-known dating companies' interviews and becomes a marriage broker. In the pro training, the platform trainers emphasized that the first thing to do was to toss the bait and create an impression in line with the target's desire. Then, through the target's spending habits, deposits, and other information, one will decide if the client is well off or not. Next, block other options for the targets so they feel the dating platform is their only hope. Create anxiety using factors such as age, fertility, children's experience after a divorce, and other distressing points to induce targets to purchase a membership that often costs tens of thousands of yuan. Would clients find the right person with the help of the platform? Some people have complained to the reporter that they identified a potential mate through the platform, but then discovered that the man wasn't single. The trainer of one dating platform said, We can't verify the private issues that you reported. A trainer on another platform said, Why do you have to make a judgment? If he says he isn't married, he isn't married. The 2024 gala against fraud has exposed the fact that many online popular food products contain a large amount of bone puree. Bone puree has various sources such as chicken and duck bones after being deboned, leftovers recycled from restaurants, or even trimmings from slaughterhouses. Other frauds include AI face swap scams, BMW with a rattling drive shaft, loan sharks disguised as a financial app, and so on. So far, the gala against fraud has been held for 33 years. The audience used to think that the exposure and unveiling by the gala was an act of promoting justice. But they have changed their perception and no longer think that way. On the contrary, they wonder why the media and the market supervisory authority don't give timely warnings after discovering so many problems year after year, and why they have to wait for the gala to expose them. In order to organize the event, CCTV reporters usually visit and investigate many suspected counterfeit products and businesses or collect relevant information and evidence in advance. But they wait until the March 15th gala to reveal them instead of immediately informing the public or reporting the problems to the authorities. A former CCTV employee in our team believes that doing it this way is to give companies time for a PR move. If the company has done its PR right, there is a high probability that it won't get exposed in the gala. Only those that haven't succeeded in PR are exposed. The gala is selective over what it exposes. In reality, it can reap huge profits by charging a protection fee. Judging from this year's show, it has gone down a notch, only daring to aim at small potatoes. In recent years, the protagonists of this show have targeted multinational corporations, small and medium-sized enterprises, or partners of large corporations, avoiding large platforms and central state-owned enterprises in China. When these enterprises are involved, their names are avoided for direct exposure. The overall strategy of this gala is to focus on making a big issue out of a small business and downplaying a serious issue of big businesses. The explosive news, shocking images, or shady secrets of well-known enterprises are usually skipped. The average Chinese audience shares similar observations. Let's take a look at the reviews of the 2024 gala on the Jihu website in China. Jihu is a question and answer site, the Chinese equivalent of Quora. One viewer wrote, if the 315 Gala dares to talk about rotten tail buildings and Evergrande, I will respect it as a hero. Someone else used these two pictures to make a point that the Gala only chooses the weakest files to swap on a mountainous garbage dump in China. Last year, in a school cafeteria in Jiangxi province, students found horrific rat heads in the food but the government insisted it was a delicious duck neck meat. Food issues like this don't make it to the glamorous annual gala. So, someone explains. It's been more than a decade since I've paid any attention to the 315 gala. 
All it does is to take the occasional crackdown on foreign investors and a few unscrupulous peddlers. They dare not touch any of the real interest groups. Anyone with ties to powerful capital won't be exposed in public. Someone else pointed directly to the issue of protection fees. What else can be expected of them? Things that should have been reported have never been reported. I wonder how much protection money was collected for this year's gala. A viewer who used to work at CCTV wrote a long rant. It reads, Even if this is going to be blocked, I still have to write. Every year, the 315 gala is becoming worse and worse, reduced to merely a play. Well, at least I used to work in CCTV. I have colleagues participating in the 315 coverage, and I also know the production process. Simply put, they have obtained the evidence in advance, and have also secretly filmed the critical video beforehand. In other words, long before the gala was aired, they could have informed the relevant departments and cracked them down. However, they held it back just to wait until the day of 315, and then broadcasted it. How sick is such a show with a so-called anti-fraud theme? A cameraman found a big pit in the middle of the road and realized that it could victimize people and vehicles. So, he had his camera ready and waited for the moment to capture the action on site. As he wished, he got the shot, and it was exceptional. But the person who fell into the pit ended up in the ICU. It isn't difficult for people with a little conscience to make a judgment call as to whether to first set up a warning sign next to the pit or to get ready and film the action. Such a show like the 315 Gala is only a drama, not really for the purpose of fighting fraud. A show with such morbid self-absorption, letting safety and hazards go unchecked, isn't really what the public needs. Really, it's probably better to go without it. Some people use Tinghua Jiu liquor as an example. China's state news agency published a report titled, New Brand, New High-End Liquor, What Makes Tinghua Jiu So Exceptional? The headline of the People's Daily Report is, Tinghua Jiu was chosen by the People's Daily as part of the Brand to Strengthen China program to contribute to the renaissance of China's manufacturing industry. Such endorsement from the central media has made people speculate a possibility. That is, despite being a fraud, Tinghua Jiu Liquor probably didn't offer enough money to the gala, so it got exposed. The viewer continued in his rant. Interestingly, behind the false advertising of Tinghua Jiu, people are surprised to find that the People's Daily, Xinhua News Agency, and CCTV have endorsed it before. Its operator was mistaken, thinking that China Media Group, CMG, and CCTV were the same, and that everything would be fine after paying off CMG. It can be said that the 315 Gala against fraud is one of the usual tactics used by the slew of CCP media. That is, to use a few well-chosen cases to downplay the problems of product safety in real life. It instills an illusion in the public that problematic products will be exposed, and product safety will be checked. However, after the passage of 33 years, the Chinese people are experiencing more and more fraud, and fraud hasn't reduced as a result of the CCP media's exposure. For those exposed enterprises or products, Chinese folk have concluded that these offenders were beaten up yesterday, apologized today, and will go on vacation tomorrow. This is no joke. When covering this year's gala, Chinese media, the paper, in addition to lavishing praise on the event, shared seemingly inadvertent statistics. According to incomplete statistics of the 328 brands and businesses publicly named in the annual 315 gala, more than half are in a normal operating state. 66 have been revoked or cancelled, and 43 have returned no results when being searched for. 16 were suspended or closed, 12 showed abnormal operation, 7 have changed their names to start over, and another 3 were bought out. 